Sheltered. Chapter 34. Ice and Scars. Katie ran out onto the modern wood-decked waterfront bank by the wide river and looked both ways before seeing the tall dark shape of Jennifer going the other way in her fishnet stockings and black clothes. She caught up with her. Hey, slow down, Katie called plaintively. It's too cold out here for running around. Yeah, maybe you're just unfit, Jen said. Katie stopped. You know, if that's how you're going to act, then what's the point? She said, turning to walk back again. Wait, no, I didn't mean to piss you off. Jen held out her arm. I just say stupid things sometimes, blunt things. Come on, walk with me. Katie stared. She wasn't ready to take any more crap from people especially not one who bad-talked Brandon. But she didn't know the whole story. She dropped her glance and breathed. Fine, but only if you're going to tell me what B did to make you hate him so bad, Katie reasoned. Jen blinked. They started walking slowly together, Katie listening intently. <sighs> he took the piss out of me in year eight and nine. He always had something to say in class to make me feel bad. I don't understand, Katie said, shaking her head into the air. This isn't how he is. I mean, he used to use people, I know. One night stands and all that. Yeah, Jen interrupted. Any girl he could go for, he would. He went for me too. In fact, he pursued me for several weeks. Then when he found out the reason I wouldn't date him was that I was a lesbian, he flipped. You're... Yeah, I am. Got a problem with that? Jen said, stopping to glare at her. Katie pursed her lips. No, I've just never met one before. They continued walking. Yeah, well, it wasn't that I was gay that he hated me, just that he couldn't have me. I thought at one point he seriously thought he was in love with me, but then I know he'd just use me like all those other girls in class, and I wasn't ever going to have sex with him. And so what? He couldn't let that go? Katie said, trying to be rational. She bowed her head to hide her eyes beneath her curtains of hair. No. He never had me like he had everyone else. Perhaps I was a challenge to him. But after a while, his pushing to get me to be his girlfriend just turned into abuse. He hated me. And in an overt way, he made everyone know it. And his popularity was his power. Everyone sided with him. She held up her right arm and pulled down a wide flat band that her watch was mounted on. Pulled it forward so Katie could see the underside of her arm more clearly. Every night for six months. And I made a mistake during that time. One cut was too deep. Katie gazed at her arm. It was lined with pink, healed up slash marks some of them diagonal to other lines, and a larger, healed-up area near the wrist. She looked up into Jen's eyes unbelievingly. Jen withdrew her hand from the light and swung her head away as she stood on the spot. Yeah, I'm not proud of it. It was my fault, I guess. But it was Brandon. He was why I did it. The deep one? I was taken to hospital for severe blood loss from slitting my wrist. Lucky the doctors could do something. Katie gawped again. Everything she knew was thrown into a new perspective. All the good times with Brandon, mired by this new, old news. Fuck, Katie whispered, backing off to sit on the raised step built into the side of the waterfront path. Jennifer smiled and wandered up to her, a hard, bitter smile on her face as the cold air blew strands of curled hair across her face. So, there, that's my story. Katie clutched her tummy. I can't believe all this time I saw this noble saviour, she remarked, her bitter apathy overtaking her need to cry. 
and he's just been a bastard. Jen patted Katie's head gently and sat down beside her. I'm over it, but I thought I'd talk to you in the bar before you went back to him, to get screwed or screwed over. Katie shook her head. No, I'm not with him. Not anymore. And he's already screwed me and ditched me. My fault, really. He was taken. But not faithful, Jen put in. Maybe his girlfriend needs reminding of that. Even now, Brandon doesn't do faithful. Katie considered. She won't believe it. Brandon will hide it from her. But you could try. If Brandon can be malevolent and nearly kill someone, then maybe he needs punishing. Jen wiped under her eye-lined eyes, finding tears. You're sweet. I don't need avenging, though. Well, maybe I do, Katie thought, of mild notions of revenge for this other from his past she had only just met. She decided to confide in her. I'm pregnant with his baby, you know. You're what? she asked, incredulous. Katie sniffed, her nose getting cold in the icy air, still clutching her stomach. I'm pretty sure. Been getting these cramps for a while now, since Brandon left me. I guess, even if he knows, I can't trust him to support me. Not now. A range of emotions flickered across those beautiful pinprick eyes of Jen's. She looked off into the middle distance, and a smile emerged. Are you having it? Brandon's kid? Without Brandon? Katie's eyebrows raised in a troubled way. I've got nobody to take care of him, or her. Jen smiled a distant smile. Are you cold, Katie? she asked. They huddled together, and then Jennifer kissed her.